Uh, that was, uh, of course, Outcast with Hey Yarn. I think Lou Reed was right on that one. Joel Wobbles here, who, who's the uh, author of I Could Have Been a Contender, a three CD box set, which is out it's on Monday, isn't it? Yeah, 23rd, yeah. Uh, on on uh, Trojan Records. And a three CD box set, which sounds, you know, like that's intimidating, but it's like 15 quid or something, isn't it? Uh, actually, f- 12 99 which there I've you go, fair which dues is, to them. They're keeping the price good. down. And you know yeah. what? Even though it's 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 not like here's six from one album, then six from another, it actually, the, the compilation, it actually runs really well together as an album, which is quite unusual in that yeah, respect. Glad you say that, because I didn't want to do chronological, and Trojan uh, thought that was a, a good thing to avoid. So what I vaguely tried to do was uh, kind of do the more poppy song stuff on the first CD. Then I knew I'd be doing all the ambient kind of weird stuff Brian Eno uh, and all that lark on the last and spoken word on the last one and it was the middle of the 80s kind of stuff the um, Invaders of the Heart first stuff and Snake Charmer Pop Tones all, all a lot of that stuff was the hardest stuff to kind of and that's the one fun enough that's the one I enjoy most now at the moment this too but I lumped all that on one because it was so in between I put that on this too right we, we were talking to Lulu about this earlier on about she was still to many people she shout which is, you know, fair enough. And to many people, you say, Joe, well, people say, oh, yeah, from Public Image. Yeah. And, of course, you were in them for, I mean, retrospectively, five minutes. That's, yeah, a couple of years, yeah. 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 And uh, compared with your right here, whole career, is that, is that really frustrating? No. Even I though they were a great band, obviously. No, not at all. And to be honest, I always, I've always left it in the biog. I've never, ever said, you know, with interviews, don't, you know, I refuse to speak about that, because that's where it started. And yeah. funny enough, it... it like in the 90s when I had a bit of a purple one, I've had about, my career's been built around three or four purple patches, you know, and in the 90s when the world music thing was happening, people didn't want to talk about pill fun enough, it just right. went away. But it missed, I'm totally, I'm one of these fellas, walk towards the search like with your hands up in life, it's where I started. <laughs> You know, when John asked me to join Peel, you know, it was that's it. So that's yeah. it, was, it started with Peel. So. Well, also, you, they were really good when you were in them, and I'm not sure it was just because you left and, and uh, was it Keith Levine left yeah. as well. But, um, you know, after that, a band who's around for that long, there's necessarily going to be some treading water, which I think they've done quite a lot, and the, the first albums are really what... I, I think it lost it. I think we had, that, um, we, had, we had that initial... that it, it, There was no management... He, was, he wouldn't get away with a, with a group of young geezers being given a load of dough like that anymore sort of a box of money. The money was kept in a cardboard box in, in, in under a bed, I, I kid you not, you know. No management. It just wouldn't happen now. Mm. And it was totally excessive, and it, and it resulted in one great kind of weird hybrid pop record, in a way, the first one, and the second one is the icon. It's just this mad, intense record mm. that wasn't a great deal of fun to make. Is that you pop times, you know? Times, right? uh, uh, metal box. Right, right, yeah. Become this sort of mad, you know, d- d- mad... This mad, crazy, extreme record. Uh, wait, uh, when was that? that was... I called it sonically. It's Munch's scream. You know, you know, <laughs> you know. And it came out in 1980. Well, well you know, it carried that... on happening a bit, though, didn't it? The Happy, Happy Mondays, famously, and then uh... yeah. And there's reasons why that shouldn't happen again. Have you heard yeah. their last album? Uh, uh, no, but I mean, yeah. uh, even back in 1990 yeah. time. But was that? Uh, we'll, we'll get off that in a second. And I don't want to, you know, be going mm. on about public image all the whole time. But it must have been. Really intimidating to be in a band with, you know, Lydon obviously at the point was the most, the single most important musical figure in the world. Yeah. He really was. There's no overestimating, you know, his sort of influence on the world at that point. And then suddenly he's got a new band. They've got to be really good. Yeah, we got slated. See, the funny thing is, Pill stock's very high at the moment. It surprised me how high it is. A couple of people were telling me, Scott Murphy, who runs the website, uh, the Pill website, was telling me about what he's seen in New York and, it's, and Alan McGee, you know, with the there's a lot of people actually influenced with a pill thing. I'm surprised how, stock it, how hard the stock is, but we were totally slagged off. Mm. The first single was like, oh, well, this is quite good, was the response. Then when the first album came out, everyone hated it. They hated it. And then when Metal Box came out, they, most of them absolutely double hated it. But you know, even when Public Image came out, I remember going... Oh, it's not the Pistols, because that's what you... You know, when the Foo Fighters happened, they were a perfectly good band, but as soon as you heard them, you went, oh, it's not Nirvana. Yeah. Oh, I wanted it to be another Nirvana. And, of course, people wanted another Pistols, and, and the whole point yeah. of the Pistols was you couldn't have another one. That's, that's it. Yeah. And then, funny enough, with Pill, when everyone come to realise it's worth, now there's a fella doing a book on it I was chatting to, and I, 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 and him and a lot of other people saying, it's a shame it ended because it could have gone on, and actually it couldn't have gone on. Mm. I think it's fantastic it stopped with Metal Box. Yeah. And I think we should just appreciate, you know, the, you know, a great football team, how long as it lasts, whatever, you know. Don't try and prolong it. Now, I should really put on a pill record because we've been talking about it, but I had another one lined up. What do you want, so many years or public image? Uh, 
So many years. All right, then let's, let's hear that first. So many years. That's an Invaders of the Heart record, is it? That's right, right. yeah, about circa sort of 88, 89, yeah. Is it, is it weird putting together a box set? Because there is an element of like, yeah, that's what I used to do. Do you know what I mean? I know, yeah, it, I know what you mean. It hasn't even got some of the later Invaders I actually of the Heart think stuff, I'm pretty it? good. I, I do book reviews sometimes for the Sunday Independent, and, it, and that really taught me very quickly to edit and just to give people what's required. And you know what? I think I detached myself from it and looked from outside of the body of Jar Wobble, <laughs> sort of thing. If I was getting, I'm getting stupid, I don't need to, do I? I just need to answer the question. Um, and just thought, right, if I wasn't Jar what, 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 what I know what you I mean. That's I need to cover yeah. it and I need to get to it. And it's, you know, something people said, you must have spent weeks. And, you know, it wasn't... When I got to it, it was a lot easier than I thought it would be. There's some hard decisions. Your tracks, I love you, but I'm sorry, there's no place. There's only so many tracks... And that's it. That must you be know. fantastically satisfying. I should have thought to think, oh, right, I've done all this. It's the best bits and favourite bits and bits that all run on together. It'd be brilliant to do that. But then wouldn't comic, it be hard to, like, yeah, throw 100 jokes oh, I did. Oh, God, I think it's every comic stream to go, oh, shall I do I'm, I'm coming up to be 20 years in showbiz, and I, I, I always want to do, yeah, let's do a tour of all my favourites. That'll save me putting any effort in whatsoever. Yeah, <laughs> And the, and the great thing is, most of it make absolutely like remember this old favourite from 1990, exactly, yeah. John Major. Who was he? <laughs> but but then surely you could have like the, the mystery of Twilight, part two, or not even part one, is 25 minutes long. Yeah, because uh, I, I played a short track there, but a lot of it is like you were saying is, is more of an ambient nature. Yeah. and that must have meant you could have put on 12 other tracks that you you, you really like, and that, that must have been a hard decision. Well, in, do you know what? When I said to Trojan, well, I'd like to do three. And I, understandably, and I, yeah, I totally under, I, I run a label as well because that's like way and a, a third more production cost. That's great, yeah. you know, for what? But that track's got Bill Laswell, Harold Budd, Jackie Libazay, Graham Haynes playing on it, and also it is such that it's a lot of good players on there. And it's part of what I do, those yeah. long, groovy things. And I can totally I understand. can't play it now because oh. we'd be running into the news in the next programme. And Yeah, it's, do you know what? It's not designed for... Yeah. It's, you know, I don't understand why stuff like that would be played on the radio. That is something, if you're if you're somebody who wants to lose yourself in a mm. certain kind of music, you play it on CD and or you download is that, it, you know. Is that very much from... When you were doing what you, what you called... He, he hates the term wild, and I, I don't really know any other term myself, and I know you just used mm. it. Um... Like, does that whole influence come from reggae? Because obviously the sort of dubs and everything you've got on the album are very, obviously very influenced from reggae in the Dub first place. Dub was the first thing I think that tranced me, was, you know, reggae music gave me that kind of, you know, put me somewhere else. Because I wasn't just, I, I was into, I mean, I was buying records on the Trojan label when I was nine and ten. That's why when I got the chance to do this box set on them, it was, it really was something. It was like tear in the eye, sort of squared the circle, you know. But I was a big Faces fan. Uh, you know, I loved Stevie Wonder, I loved, you know. I imagine you'd also, the other side of you, you'd like stuff like the Nusrit Fatty Ellie Khan and all this sort of Well, this is it, the trance stuff. thing. So it, it was dub, it was reggae, like the, the bottom end. So it was even, there was, there was tracks, like, this obscure track called Witch Doctor, I remember, it was on one of those Titan Ups that was fair, that would send me somewhere else. Dub really carried that on, and then it led me into a real proper trance form. It was like for Fatty Khan. Is that why you, know? you, you think, I know you were friends, but is that why you were asked to join Public Image? Because obviously Lydon was legendarily a very big reggae fan and stuff. Yeah, I think what he wanted to avoid was just another rock band. He wanted to do right, something yeah. that was a bit more towards a reggae thing or certainly a white and a rock thing. And I think knowing that I played a bit of bass. And also, I was a, I, I could have joined other bands, but it wouldn't. I was totally wasn't interested. I was, I'd rather have not bothered unless it could be something yeah. good. So when Pill come, and when that idea come, I think there was only two people who was going to ask, me and Keith, who was probably at that point one of the better musicians around on that scene. You know, and because I'd been in that, you know, really understood the, the, the bass line thing. I was into doing these bass lines that I think mean, that intrigued That's the thing you. that people have always rated you from that from the beginning. They've said, no, but there's a lot of unusual stuff going on here that you wouldn't get with your, you know, the vibrators or the lurkers wouldn't have mm. had a bass player like that. They're, they're, I'm sure you have a million of them, but there are two classic rock and roll stories that were as good as any rock and roll story I've ever heard. Tell Mark why you're called Jar Wobble. Oh, well, it's uh, Sid Vicious. Although, although, I, although there's I always, a start to a story already, isn't it? Although I always thought it was... Um, you know, I think John was there, but, but it, apparently it was Sid, you know. Well gone, you know, and uh, and he, he, we were mucking about of each other's names, and my real name's John Wardle, so he, he said, Jar Wobble, Jar, Jar Wobble, because I was into reggae, he said, Jar, and then Wardle, well, and, and I said, right, I'm going to keep that. <laughs> I'm going to keep that. It was when everyone had a, a name, yeah. you know, a nickname. I'm going to keep that. And because somehow you, you you won't forget it, so it sort sort of held me in good stead, you know. It certainly has. And how, how cool is that? Oh, you got your name from Sid Vicious, Sid Vicious being a bit drunk and slurry next to you at yeah. some point. Yeah. Uh, let's play a track. This was this was actually a, a, a big hit for you, wasn't it? Visions of You. Yeah. With yeah. Shadow Connor. Does it, does it bother you actually? I've noticed there's a lot on the album where 
Um, you know, it's, it's all sort of handed over, particularly vocally, to completely other artists. And you obviously don't have that sort of ego problem that a no, lot of not artists at all. have. Um, and, you know, most people, he's, he's, I kind of see it, I'm setting the conditions for other people to do well, uh, especially drummers actually live. I always try, I always think I make the drummers look really good, you know. And yeah, I, I don't mind that at all. Because actually, there's a track on there that says on my little list here that it's Shane McGowan, but it doesn't sound like Shane McGowan. It's... No, he wrote it. Oh, it's, it's the that. geezer from the Dublin, isn't That's it? it sounds yeah, like. and it's uh, Ronnie Drew, who's narrated. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, this isn't that. This is um, this is Visions of You with Sinead O'Connor on the vocals. I'm trying to remember what the band was called then. That, was that Invaders of the Heart? Was that? Yes, Invaders then? of the Heart. That was Invaders yeah. of the Heart. Yeah. With uh, Visions of You featuring, of course. I think it, she's not underrated because I think everyone who knows her voice goes, yeah, magnificent. But she's just not sort of, she's sort of dipped under the radar for a while now and people don't talk about her as often as they do because she's such a great talent. I mean, she's for real, you know. She, she, I don't mean she's that, she's not fake and she's not, she's t- not a typical career plotting kind of a star, you know. So I think she fancies it. She, we just come together at a time. She is the other way. Isn't she? She'll do it. She'll do anything that could ruin her career. It's that same as be selfish in a way. <laughs> yeah, um, but oh, she's, yeah. you know, she's come together. She, we come together at a good time, uh, it, and it worked like a dream. You know? Joe, if I can call you that now, I know the origins of your name. Yeah, well, or, or, yeah, that's all right, yeah. yeah. Last week, Ronnie Ancona was on, you know, Ronnie Ancona, and she thought your name was Joe Wobble, and I thought, that's a good name too. She was like, oh, Joe Wobble, but she yeah. didn't know who oh, that was. Funny, Maybe well, there is a Joe Wobble. Say, it's funny you say that, because the well, Geezer Alley, Sulemani, who was one of the singers in Vader's used to always call me Joe. Oh, right. So, hey, Joe. Joe. So I was called Joe a lot by the Algerians, all called me Joe. I'm, but my middle name's Joseph as well, like John Joe. Well, there might well be a Joe so, Wobble who wanted to call yeah. himself Joe Wobble, and then they thought, the one thing I wasn't expecting, he yeah. come back, so there's already one. And, yeah, yeah, he suddenly no, became no. a Rastafarian. He wanted to call himself that, and then, oh, no, no, sure. some, not some, not a bald man's taken that. That's not right. I think it is. But I now, we, it, we uh, were on the radio once before. That's on, right, loose on, on loose ends. Yeah, with one, 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 one of your own. One of your own. Yeah, I know because I used to do that quite. What does that mean? One of your own. One of your own. It was ironic. It was an ironic. I don't know. No, he's all right. Actually, he was all right. No, no, he's lovely yeah. fella. But yeah. it was. Um, and I used to uh, love going on there, and you do me, you do a little comedy turn. But it was a peculiar thing because you sort of uh, there would be Ned. Oh, good morning, Mark. And he would sort of. I was remember the thing I remember about him once was uh, after the show once uh, I said, um, I said, Ned, do you fancy going to the cricket at all this year? because I knew he liked the cricket, and he said, uh, oh, uh, I, I usually go to Lords." Uh, I said, oh, and I was just about to say, oh, well, maybe we can go together. He said, I usually share a box with Tim Rice. And I thought, of course, don't try to imagine that we're part yeah. of the same world. Actually, I and, think it was... Oh, right, Tim, Andrew, that was it. I was When I was on there, Andrew Lloyd Webber's brother... Was the, the cello player? Oh yeah, Julian. Julian on yeah. it, and he said he used to work on the underground fashion. I'd love to, I'd love to sort of know. I said, why don't you buy one of the trains? Because she's <laughs> probably got enough day, you know. But, uh, yeah. But this is the other a... story I wanted you to tell. The underground story. Yeah. Do you know this story, Mark? So, nice yeah, story. yeah, well, no, I'm about the underground. But no, hang on, just, just well, yeah, leading yeah, to yeah, that, because yeah. the thing is, I used to sort of sit there, and there would be a, a Ned, and he'd be sort of Tim Rice in a way, and there'd be various sort of people sat around the table, and he'd say, oh, dear, sort of, you know, Derek Jacobi or someone like that, and they'd all be going, oh, marvellous story, Peter O'Toole got drunk, ad-libbed, middle of Hamlet, suddenly said, I appear to have too much vodka, and they'd all fall about. And that's think, it, What's that's it, I know. All oh, this, oh, and I'd oh, feel oh, completely yeah, yeah, out yeah, of yeah, place. Yeah, and so yeah, whenever I was in there, I'd think, please let there be some ally or other, and you come in and started talking about the underground, and I thought, Oh, I feel at home now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was. A, yeah, it was a fun. I've done it a couple of times. It was all right, but it's the. You know, it was. No, it was, it was there, very radio. Right. Very radio four. It's a different world to it's us. It's a cricket jumpers kind of a turnout. Bride's Ed oh, revisited like cricket, kind of a. Yeah, yeah. So, Bride's Ed revisited sort of a lark. I don't you know. love it, but you know you don't belong there. That's the difference. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I belong on a different bit of the ground. However. Yeah. Have you any stories or anecdotes? I know, I did it straight. There's, an, there's two ways of doing it. The old way, the Bruce Forsyth way, where he talks to you for ten minutes That's and he it. goes, so you went on holiday once and, and it would turn out there would be a funny story. I went straight to the Les Dennis. Tell me the story about the engineer and the mackerels. I went straight to that, you know, I just led you straight into it. So... Well, I think the one you, Have you ever worked on the underground there? Is that you interest, you? Interestingly yeah, enough, yeah, interesting, interesting jobs. <laughs> yes. I came in by car this morning. I could have come on the Piccadilly line. Have you ever done I anything? Have done it this way. Oh, and now it's funny you say that. <laughs> My first two lines I worked on were, were the district and the pick, which were paired together in those days. But <laughs> yes, yeah, so, um, once yeah. you're in the know, <laughs> yeah, that's the pick. it. That's it. That's it. You're <laughs> the in the, the, the pick. pick. There you go. Right. Well, 
I think the one you talked about was have a few. Have you ever yeah. left any jobs in an interesting fashion? <laughs> no, actually, Joe. no. No, right. The underground, I left properly, got the resignment form, which had all dust on it, and they thought that was very strange because the geezer said, no, I never resigns from this job. Are you sure you... But, you know, I was sure. Thank you very much. So, anyway, so I had a good work record there, but the time you're talking about, I had just started... I was a railway man. I was sweeping a platform at Tower Hill Station. And this is after you'd made records and been in the Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is a long... long, This is uh, 86, 87, 87. Because uh, that that was it. I'd, I'd I'd gone through my drink and drugs hell, which I refused to discuss. Uh, but anyway, no, no I'd got because <laughs> no one's asked. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So anyway, all that had, uh, had, had, had got. So I cleaned the act up, right? So I cleaned the act up. Straight job. Blah blah blah. So there you go. So I end up, um, and it's this Kafkaesque. It's a Kafkaesque world, it, especially them days, insane. But anyway, Terrell, rush hour, and I'm sweeping the platform, and you become sort of invisible. So I, I just for a laugh went up to the wall because I was thinking how funny it all turned out. Because I just thought it was. I was actually happy to be alive. I went to the wall, the intercom, and I said, "I used to be somebody." On the announcement, <laughs> "I used to be somebody." Put it down and just sweep it up. And it all looks at me. It was like the night, of, you know, it's like the, the, the dawn of the living dead, isn't it? For the, you know, when, you, that's how you see the public in them jobs. And, and I just continued sweeping. Now look, they just they, they looked at me balefully, and uh, you know, and that was it. I carried on sweeping up, and now I've got, oh. then, then I become a ticket collector. I um, thought that was how you left. I thought it was like a big. No, 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 no. You, I took it off. You had to do a lot more than that. I, I, I could tell you stories. I better be very careful what I say. They say the that public. about the BBC, you can't get fired. Yeah, Is yeah, it no, like that no, on the exactly. Uh, yes, it, them days it certainly was. I saw things go on there that were oh, unbelievable. That you know, no, you could, you could have gone jumping down the tunnel on a swivel stick, doink, 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 <laughs> and, and you, you, you know, <laughs> singing Royal Britannia, and you might have got a written warning. You know, <laughs> so, you know, it was about it, really. You We've know. had a lot of emails from ours left since you started. <laughs> oh, talking. you know, yeah, yeah. I, saw, I don't. I don't, I don't you know what? At a time it annoyed me. They never went on strike when I was there. And I was saying, why oh, can't we have a strike? Shame, isn't it? But no one ever. You didn't you want know. one for political reasons, just for time off. Is that what you Just you're for time off. When we had a train va- vandalised, that was, yes, you know, out of service. <laughs> and I used to love, I used to love going up, you know, reaching around. You know, when you, you, you stop the train somewhere it's not supposed to stop, you c- cart them all out. I used to love it. All change, please. All change out of the car. All, what is that? I don't know. Ask the station <laughs> staff. And you reach up and you close every, you check every carriage and you'd reach up and there's a button up there which closes it. I used to love that. And we'd get off back to the depot, oh, lovely. But, but out, out, out of service. Got, I've, uh, I've met Bob Crow a couple of times. And I, I, I think he's a terrific bloke for all sorts of reasons. But uh, what I love about him most of all is that he's like an old fashioned union leader. And I saw him on the, the telly once. There was, been a, there was a, a strike that he was defending. And he said uh, it was about tea breaks that were being cut. And he actually said, in such an old-fashioned trade union leader way, he said, it has got to the point where some of our members are no longer allowed out for a urination. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, oh, the, well that, was all, that was an issue when I was on it, it to- what toilets there were and where and all that, which is a lark, because all you did was have... Where, where you had the underground sidings, especially reek of urine, because all you do is open your guard's door and have a... You know, so you just relieve yourself underground. You so almost becomes... said Jimmy Riddle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I was going to, but I actually thought maybe I shouldn't. But, you know, yeah, you'd have a Jimmy, Bosch, you know, what, up to the wall, I, and I that bet, was it. Now you can see why I thought this is an ally. Another yeah, funny thing, loads ends. of mice down there, no rats. No, I never, I never saw a rat on the underground. Saw a few of me garden in Bethnal Green and all that, and I've worked with I've a few. I've seen them on the platforms, but, but there you go. Let's, yeah, let's, yeah, uh, but, it's, you know what I, I always find shocking? Not shocking, but well, I've met you a few times in the past, and you're always like this. You're always full of energy and full of, you know, joy and vivacity. And yet your music often is, you know, it seems so weird that you do that sort of ambient stuff. You expect to see some old, like, uh, a hippie in a caftan yeah. with, some, with some bells on his fingers and toes. Yeah, just going, yeah, man, and and you're the complete opposite of that. No, that's right. Well, yeah. Although last time I see you, you'd just been beaten up quite savagely in the street, so I could see. No, I had a rat. No, so... I had a cut on me. No, no yeah. I weren't beaten. I had one cut, but I've done a bit more damage to them as it happens. All right. Uh, you know, so I'd had a good row. You but, see, um... this is not what you expect from your ambient. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't, I don't think, think Peter Gabriel when he's got a new album out. I was going, carrying one. Well, I, 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 I sorted them out. I'd had one cut, but no, I'd had a proper. Yeah, they they I'd let they come off worse. But anyway, we've got to wrap it up. We've got to wrap it up because it's it's gotten in a life so. You know. Yeah, there you go. The, yeah. the three the three C D compilation I could have been a contender is in the shops on Monday and firmly recommended. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone who's been on the last few weeks. I do apologise, I've played very little new stuff today, and that's just been a, a amount of circumstance, but I will be back at half ten on Monday doing Radcliffe Show for the next week. Thank you very much, Mark, for sitting with me for the last three weeks. It's a pleasure. And thank you to Terry. Less thank you to Sean and his rubbishy music and Lulu is great. Bye. Just-